Want to play Half-Life Alex on the Oculus Quest? In this video, we're going to talk about how to set up the process for using the Oculus Quest to access Shadow, a high-performance cloud PC solution which will not only be able to handle the running of graphically intense games like Half-Life Alex, but also stream it wirelessly to the Oculus Quest headset with such minimal latency you'll forget you're not playing it locally. So if you're new to the channel and haven't heard about Shadow, uh, there's like a hundred videos on it on this channel here. Uh, be sure to check them out. And if you're interested in signing up to the service, there is an affiliate link in the description down below, which will get you 10 pounds, euros or dollars off your first month subscription, depending on where you are. And if you're a regular here on the channel, you'll know we've recently talked about the Shadow VR exploration program, which has just launched in the US, which is allowing a select number of users to go through alpha testing of an officially supported Shadow application for the Oculus Quest, which will allow you to achieve similar results. Obviously, an officially supported application is 100% the way to go. Uh, not only do you remove the element of third party software, uh, but also get the added benefit of Shadow support. But while they're currently in alpha testing and you just need to try this now, this is the workaround we're going with. So yeah, I just wanted to highlight that this is an unofficial solution. Shadow are not saying they support this functionality. It just happens to work. Uh, so if you do get stuck, don't reach out to them. That's what Reddit is for. So what I'm going to do is walk you through each step of this setup process in kind of a high level, but just to give you an idea. But what I'll do is leave links in the description down below to some full technical step-by-step -step documentation uh, written by some true OG Reddit users. So a big shout out to you guys because uh, right now it goes NHS workers, delivery people, Reddit users who create detailed guides. So Mark, if we're not using an application provided by Shadow, what are we using? And the answer to that is Virtual Desktop. Virtual Desktop is an amazingly beautiful app, which at the heart of its functionality allows you to access your PC desktop on a giant screen in VR. So playing games aside, you can scroll Twitter, watch YouTube or play movies in VR on a cinema sized screen. But obviously the benefit we're looking at here is you now have wireless access to your shadow desktop at low latency, which means you can get into applications like Steam VR and suddenly you've unlocked high demanding VR titles like Half-Life Alex. So I've managed to summarize this setup into just over 10 steps, but again, uh, link will be in the description down below to the full detailed guide. So let's start off at step six. Actually, step, step one seems like it would be a better place. So step one, on your Oculus Quest, head over to the Oculus Store and buy and install the Virtual Desktop app. Next, using SideQuest, look for the latest version of Virtual Desktop and sideload it onto your Oculus Quest headset. Again, this is a high level overview setup video, so I'm not gonna go into the realms of how SideQuest works. But again, I'll leave a link in the description to uh, walk you through that step by step. Next, jump onto your shadow machine, head over to the virtual desktop website and install the virtual desktop streamer application. The virtual desktop streamer app is super easy to set up. I'll show you my settings here, but essentially the two things you're entering is your Oculus Quest username and the one setting you need to make sure is enabled is allowing remote connections. Okay, two more things to install on your shadow machine. Uh, firstly, Steam VR. Where else are you going to get the games, you dingus? And number two, the Oculus software for PC. Okay, we're ready to jump into the headset. Are you in? Good. So open the virtual desktop application, and if you've sideloaded it correctly, then whatever version you have installed should say sideloaded next to it. Again, I'm going to show you the settings for my virtual desktop quest application, but from memory, you're not changing a whole lot here. So if you've set up the virtual desktop streamer application correctly and it's running on your shadow machine, you should see the name of your shadow VM under the computer section of the virtual desktop quest application. Uh, side note, mine has a little warning underneath stating that my PC is not on the same network as my headset. We're aware of that. That's correct. So from here, you're simply selecting the machine to connect to it. And that is where my experience gets uh, slightly patchy. Again, this is a third party solution. But what I sometimes experience is it failing to connect the first few times, sometimes just stating fail to connect, sometimes saying the machine is unreachable. Uh, and my ingenious solution behind this is brute force. Uh, literally, after some trial and error, if you keep trying to reconnect, eventually it will. And also there's an option in the Virtual Desktop Quest application for auto connect. So if you enable that and then go to connect and it doesn't successfully connect the first time, it will keep retrying until it does. However, a lot of that could literally be down to my personal setup, my network, my ISP. So if it doesn't apply to you, ignore everything I just said. So you've connected and you can see your desktop. Uh, first of all, take awe in the fact that you're standing in a giant version of your shadow desktop. And now stop playing around, let's get serious. Next, launch into Steam VR. Immediately head over to the toys on the shelf and have a bit of a play. And then remember, not five seconds ago, we said, let's get serious.
But that's pretty much it. Obviously, once you're in Steam VR, you'll have access to the Steam Store. Uh, here, I recommend you try installing a few free titles first, just to make sure your connection, your performance is good enough before dropping 50 pounds on Half-Life Alex. But then if it's all looking good, then yeah, you're playing PC VR titles wirelessly streamed via the cloud from a machine which is maybe not even in the same state as you, or for myself personally, not even in the same country. And I come up with that, our plan of attack for this game. I feel like we should start over here and then make our way over here. And then we've got these two defensive lines and then we can get some reinforcements to group up up there, what do you think? So we're gonna jump into some gameplay now so that you can see that yes, this is for real Z's and I didn't just make this up because I was bored. But first I wanted to leave you with five top tips to make sure you are getting the best performance and experience at this solution. Number one, five gigahertz Wi-Fi is an absolute must. 2.4 just will not cut it. Number two, similar to the parameters set by the Shadow VR Exploration Program, they recommended their testers have a minimum of a local 100 meg download speed. Um, I'm gonna say I probably recommend similar. You could maybe get away with less, but 100 is what I recommend. Uh, next, make sure that the side-loaded version of the virtual desktop application on your Oculus Quest matches the version number of the virtual desktop streamer application installed on your Shadow machine. This gave me some trouble. Number four, lower your bandwidth on Shadow. I don't know why it works, it just does. It goes against all of the norms of uh, using Shadow normally where you'd want that sweet spot. Crank it down, it works better. Mm. And number five, in your router settings, ensure that UPnP or Universal Plug and Play is enabled because this will allow devices to discover each other on your network. Okay, we're gonna jump into some gameplay. Uh, I had some recorded previously. It was just the first five minutes of the game but I realized that would exclude all of the stuff like the gun and gravity gloves. Oh, I can't keep that. There you go. Alex! Ooh. Alex, the signal's back. Can you hear me? Are you okay? Russell, I'm good. How's Dad? They've got him on the train. He's on the move. You've got to find Fairview Junction before they get there. I'm working on it. I, uh... Mm. Nope. Ah! Oh, more things. Anything happen when you cut out? You're not gonna believe this. Oh, so they've got a hard outer shell. What was he doing out there? Hiding. So we oh. escaped from the combat. What the hell? You ever meet a Vortigon? He said crazy Vortigon. One. Fuck. Uh, there we go. This is the last one. Oh, there's two. I'm here, friend. Ah, damn it. The clip. Ooh, another clip. Got him. Ooh, is that my empty one? Don't think so. One of you gonna be in here, isn't it? There's my bloop. There it is. Anything else in here? Can we get the hell out? Go, go, go. Blink. down, I guess. Seems much easier. Oh, that pipe 
is in the way. Grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it! Ah, maybe we have to put the pipe back in. Whoop. that seems like a good place to stop but yeah hopefully this helps you out uh, if you're an oculus quest user who's been dying to play stuff like half-life alex or other intensive vr titles which were previously locked behind the barrier of having to own a local and expensive gaming pc i'm expecting this to generate a lot of questions uh, so feel free to leave questions in the comments down below if i know the answer i'll get back to you but as i've stated a lot of this like my setup came from reddit so I would probably direct you back to there if you have any technical questions. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it helpful, a like rating would be appreciated. If you have not already, remember to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. Uh, remember to stay safe, keep washing your hands, and as always, I shall see you in the next one.